Hi, I'm Sarah Stone Cipher. This is my channel where we talk about all things brick and mortar retail. But today, I'm gonna share a little bit about my story of how I got here. I own a store in downtown St. Pete for the last 12 years called Miss Red. But before I ever got into retail, I'm gonna back almost all the way up to my childhood. When I was a little kid, my mom opened up a store in the same downtown area that my store is currently at, and she opened a consignment store. Now, I remember as a kid, me and my sisters going to work with her. It was in an old house. So we converted underneath the stairs into a great little pay play area. So I have amazing memories of what it would is like to be in retail, to be a boutique owner. Now, fast forward to me going to college. I, at that point, had no desire to go into retail. I wanted to make it big in the music industry. No, I can't sing. But I was in kind of behind the scenes. In college, I worked backstage at the House of Blues. So I was really into the production of music. And so um, in college, I kind of just picked the easiest major I could find, hospitality management, because I really focused on work. I threw myself into the music industry and once I graduated college, I actually moved to Nashville um, thinking I was gonna work for Sony and I had all these connections. Well, that didn't happen. I ended up quickly moving home with my tail between my legs, living on my mom's couch and really not knowing what I was going to do next. I, um, really struggled because I had this dream that had completely collapsed. And yet at the same time, I felt like even that dream wasn't putting me in the right direction. And so my mom forced me to go out. I was so depressed, you guys, it was crazy. My mom forced me to go out with some of her girlfriends one night. And it just so happened that one of her friends worked for Dillard's corporate headquarters. Um, she worked in their advertising department and did national campaigns for them. And she said, listen, I know that you've always loved fashion. It's in you. Have you ever thought about going back into the fashion industry? And I said, you know, no, I." I, I don't think that's where I'm gonna end up. And she said, well, listen, you're sleeping on your mom's couch, so you have nothing to do. Come to work with me tomorrow and I'll see, you know, what I can do. Now, she said after about a day of me being at Dillard's, working for free, she told me, you know, I don't know if they're ever gonna be able to put you on payroll, but you might as well get some experience. Think of it as an internship. Two weeks later, they offered me a paid job and I ended up working for the advertising department, just like her. I was booking models and doing photo shoots, really learning on the job. And it put me into the fashion industry in a realm that I had not experienced before. All I knew before was brick and mortar retail. And this was eye opening to see for a big company what what the world looked like beyond the walls of a boutique. I stayed there for a couple of years and then realized I kind of wanted to see what else was out there. So I left and there was a local um, girl in town who had uh, a national brand, a clothing brand. And so I ended up going on to her team and being a sales rep. So I was actually going to all the markets, setting up the booths, selling her clothes. Um, and that really gave me another insight into the fashion industry that I had never experienced before. It was really cool because um, I went from a big corporate entity like Dillard's all the way to a small business. So I really got to see the ins and outs of small business. But at that point, I also thought maybe I wanted to have my own clothing line. So it was really interesting to see the entire process of how clothes are made and distributed. But honestly, I was on the road like 22 days a month. And I just, at that point, had just gotten engaged and um, decided, you know, I don't think this is for me. So I left ended up working for an e-commerce website. A woman in town who um, I became very good friends with was a uh, e-commerce entrepreneur before e-commerce. She was one of the first people to sell vintage 
on eBay. And this is, I don't know, what is this? 15 years ago, probably. So she was really at the forefront and I came on board when she was just getting off of eBay and creating her own site. And she was known around the world for her finds. She had customers in every continent, working for Vogue in Paris and you know all of these fashion houses in New York, buying vintage from her to wear to New York Fashion Week. It was so intriguing and I came on essentially as her personal assistant. So again, I got to see ins and outs of small business, another entity of the fashion world that I had no clue about. But after a couple of years of doing that, I realized A, I definitely wanted to be in the fashion industry, but B, I did not want to be online. I was meant to be with people every day, not sitting in front of a computer. And so it was perfect timing. The woman who owned the company was um, wanting to start a family. And so we kind of parted ways and it forced me to make the decision of what the heck I was gonna do next. And at this point, I was 28. <laughs> I was like, you know, why don't I try this boutique thing that my mom, you know, kind of inspired me to do all of those years ago. And so I started writing a business plan and I started really diving into all the research, all the while driving around my downtown every single day looking for space. And eventually the block that I'm in now, that I've been in this whole time, my building came available, but it was a low rent artist district. It was very scary. I somehow convinced my landlord to let me into this space, even though it was supposed to be all just artists. And I started as a vintage shop because again, I had left the vintage world with this vintage e-commerce site. And so it was what I knew at the time, but also I was 28, I had no money. At that point, I had been waiting tables at night to save money for my um, dream store, but I still only had between savings um, and a little bit of credit card, very, very tiny credit card. Um, I scraped together $17,000 and I was able to open the store because I did all secondhand clothing, used fixtures. I mean, I cannot tell you how much stuff I found on the side of the road or <laughs> uh, people gave it the, my jewelry table when I opened was the dining room table we had as a kid at my house, okay? So you you made it work. You I opened up having absolutely no idea what I was getting into. And guys, it was scary. I had no clue what I was doing. Even though my mom had a store, it was so different and she had had it 20 years prior. So the world was so different. Internet, cell phones, all the things were so different. But but I just dove in with my whole heart and we have been here ever since. I think the reason why we are a success today is because we have figured out how to ebb and flow with the world around us. We are no longer vintage. Uh, I stopped that about two, three years in because I started realizing that downtown was really just growing with lots of people and lots of different, um, People from all over the world with lots of different budgets were moving into St. Pete. It wasn't just this crazy arts town anymore. And I knew I had the opportunity to make more money with uh, new merchandise. And so we did that. And from that point on, we have just grown and grown in size every year. So I'm telling you this because if you don't know what you wanna do, just dive in. There are so many areas of the fashion world that are you know, so different from each other and you won't know which aspect you wanna go into until you do it yourself. Everybody wants free labor. Even if you just ask if you can intern somewhere for a month, whether it's a boutique or an online store, you name it, and then you'll really get a sense of what you wanna do going forward. But I will tell you, after everything that I have done in the fashion world, there is nothing like owning your own store. There is nothing like turning that open sign every single day and seeing smiling faces. I could get emotional, you guys. Smiling faces walking through that door and you are making a real difference. It sounds so dumb because we're just selling dresses and jewelry, right? But we're making a real difference in people's lives retail therapy is a real thing and there's just nothing like it in the world. 
So I encourage you, if you do want to open up your own store, we have a great new book that I just released that will walk you through the entire process, start up to success. And I am telling you, I have put all of my, everything I've ever learned in my career into this book and it is only under $50, $49.95. So you guys, it is a steal with all the information and let me help you become a boutique owner because it is the most rewarding and fulfilling thing I believe you can do in as part of the fashion world. <laughs>